All right, here's a standard Sporlin uh, expansion valve, refrigeration valve. Just want to show you a couple of the components uh, on this valve. First of all, you'll notice that it uh, does come marked. This is an S body valve, a nominal four tons, uh, in particular SSE4. Uh, it's labeled with the Sporlin name right there, if you can uh, grab that on the camera. And also, you'll see that this is the inlet labeled. So this particular valve is a half inch inlet and a 7 8 outlet. It's the power head right here. You'll notice on the top, 502, 404, 402, and 507 are all listed refrigerants for this valve. Um, it is an RZP83 uh, at the top is the size of the power head. Uh, there's two different sizes depending on the valve body that you have. Uh, I think it's a 48 or an 83 or 43 or an 83. I can't remember right now, but this is the larger size, the 83. And the ZP is a uh, low temp pressure limiting uh, power head. It also comes in a C charge, which is typical uh, medium temp refrigeration and non pressure limiting also. In this particular application, we're going to be using pressure limiting valve and uh, let's take a look at the selection process. Uh, made by Ray Corporation. Um, they come in lots of different shapes and sizes, but this is pretty typical. Uh, you'll notice that is uh, electric defrost, and then I'll go over right now. So what we're working on is a A424 um, 371E. So it just means that it's a 404 coil 371. Uh, refers to the tonnage and that's nominal capacity. We'll get to that in a second down here uh, Scroll through the construction blah 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 and we'll get to the capacity. So you have a 420-371 uh, There's just zeros here in lieu of the uh, number that would be representative of the refrigerant and we see that this is the amount of CFM that we're passing over the coil and uh, based on the number of fans that we have and fence branch, things like that. And then we have the our evaporator temperature. So uh, in this case, the customer wants to uh, maintain minus, uh, or excuse me, zero degree uh, box temp, minus 10 to zero degree box temp is what they want to maintain. Uh, in order to do that, we're going to have a evaporator temperature that's at least 10 degrees colder than that. Um, typical construction is a 10 degree TD between the box temp and the evap temp uh, to maintain temperature and humidity levels. And so we see right here that we have minus 20 evap temp would put us at right at 35,782 um, BTUs minus 10 evap, 37,936 BTUs. So Dividing that by 12,000, we get just at three tons um, of refrigeration, you know, anywhere in that area, zero to 10 degree box temp. And then if we come over here and take a look at our uh, Sporlin valve sizing, I'll show you the picture if I can get it in the video. The valve that's currently on this unit is this uh, valve right here, an SBFC. Uh, it's a little bit different, it's a balance port expansion valve. But the reason why this whole video has come about is because if you'll notice here, you'll see 404 refrigerant, uh, excuse me, 404A refrigerant, and all of our different. This is uh, coming directly from Sporlin. This is the 10-10 bulletin that Sporlin has published. I think this one's from 2011, and you can see right on here that we have uh, listings for all different refrigerants, but this is 404A and 408A, but specifically for 404A, we see that we have an, uh, a ZP power head and the recommended thermostatic char charge that's listed here. And we have uh, evaporator temperature. So we're gonna be running a minus 10 to minus 20 evap temperature uh, to get our box to uh, zero to minus 10, somewhere in that range. Uh, right now, the you'll notice it's this column right here, these two columns. So if we scroll down to what they currently have, they have an SBF uh, C valve. And like I said, I'll try to pop a picture in there if I can on the video. 
but if you notice that valve and our operating conditions that we're looking for runs anywhere between 2.1 and 2.45 tons so essentially this valve is undersized by uh, well either almost a ton or a half a ton so at peak conditions highest load this valve is only going to be able to open up to anywhere between 2.1 tons and 2.4 tons so they're basically derating their system by having this valve in that uh, evaporator coil uh, one thing I do want to mention right now is that the manufacturers will supply you with the expansion valve that they have listed for their coil and that uh, is a great way to go about finding which uh, which TXV to use. In this case I did end up calling Century, talked to their uh, parts department over there and found out that this S body valve is what they had listed for the uh, coil and its nominal capacity is of four tons. So you can see here that somebody might look at that and say well I have an S body valve and it's for a four ton uh, nominal capacity but you don't get four tons of capacity out of this valve until you get up to a plus 20 um, suction or plus 20 evap temp same thing so you would have uh, you're looking at a medium temp application for that and uh, it derates to 3.42 tons at minus 10 and 2.94 at minus 20 They're right at the uh, knife edge of you know whether it's going to work to its full capacity or not at uh, you know peak conditions hottest can highest load conditions so uh, that's one way to go about it uh, I typically do prefer the balance port valves over the standard valves and we can get into that in another video um, it just comes down to the I would probably have gone with the EBS valve right here if it were my choice um, I, I like the balance port options uh, I really like the O valves but those are for much larger coils uh, 10 ton coils and larger or I guess right here you can see it's five or six ton coils and larger uh, O V E 12 or something like that is what I'm typically using but um, in this case the manufacturer did recommend or did say that they originally shipped this unit with a SSE 4 valve and I'm gonna go back in with that valve and we're gonna uh, that's gonna work just fine for our application um, so one other thing I want to show you guys is the Sporlin selection tool and uh, we'll see if we can catch that right now. Here's the Sporlin selection tool. This is software you can download off the Sporlin website. It's free uh, to have. Anybody can download it and just a quick run through it. It sizes expansion valves, distributors, uh, as regular as the EPR. Um, EVAP regulator, crankcase regulators, differential regulator, or excuse me, this is a discharge bypass valve, uh, head pressure control, solenoids, uh, filter dryers, electronic expansion valves, e electronic EPR, and discharge bypass electronics. So we're going to go with the TXV listing right here. 404A is our application. Um, minus 20 EVAP temp, condenser temp, uh, I'm in Dallas. So we're going to go with 100 liquid temp. We're going to have some subcooling, even though it is a receiver. Uh, we're looking at, well, probably by the time it's not a very long line set, so we're going to put in 10 degrees of subcooling. Um, distributor pressure drop. This is typically 25 to 35. If you look in the Sporlin bulletin, that 10 10 bulletin, you will find that there is a way to determine what the pressure drop is through the distributor. And this is one of the reasons why I do recommend going back to the manufacturer because they've already, just like air conditioning systems, uh, just like anything, chillers, anything else out there, they already have the manufacturer data for this. They've already run through all these calculations. They know what their pressure drop is going to be through their distributor, um, through, all, through the orifice, through anything, uh, you know, any other different system add-ons that they have. Uh, so they already have that information and they've already sized it accordingly. So assuming that you go back in with the same equipment, everything, uh, you know, basically all things being the same, you know, they're gonna have the right TXV for that. But assuming you didn't have any of that information and you were trying to size an expansion valve, 
this is where, uh, or you couldn't get the information that you needed, this is where we would go. Uh, high side pressure drop, it's not going to make too much of a difference, but you know you want to have that as low as possible anyway, so uh, maybe a couple PSI for high side uh, pressure drop. Valve type, you do have, the one thing, one limitation on this selection software is you do have to uh, tell it what valve body you want to have it spit out to you. I would like to see a, a version of this where it gave you multiple options, but that's just not the case right now. So um, I'm going to first put in this information with the valve body that they had originally on the coil, or they still do have on the coil, which is an SBF. And we're going to put in, uh, we're just going to skip over nominal valve capacity because we want it to figure out um, that information for us. And we're going to put in evaporator capacity at three tons. Oh, excuse me. And we're going to hit OK. And you're going to get this screen right here. Well, I paused right there because I didn't get quite the reading I was looking for. The saying the percentage of rated capacity is 62% of the valve, and I know that's not the case. And looking up here, I see that instead of putting in 10 degrees of subcooling, I put in 10 degrees as our liquid temp, which would be 90 degrees of subcooling. It'd be a heck of a subcooler on this system. So we're going to go back. It's real easy to do. We go back to the expansion valve selection tool. We're just going to correct our mistake here, 90 degrees liquid 10 degrees of subcooling and that brings up the rating at those conditions which now puts us as you can see here percentage of rated capacity 112 so it tells you our subcooling is 9 uh, and minus 20 evap temp 100 degree condensing temperature and we we're rated 112 so it's going to give you this warning here that says you know warning uh, you have something going on with your valve and it's not going to work right. So we see well, obviously the H is for high um, and you can tell that the valve is undersized at that point. So at this point we're going to go back and we're going to show you if you put in the same information with just an S body valve it's going to spit out an SSE6 and percentage of rated capacity is 61 and we see that there are no warnings here. Um, you have subcooling, this is your pressure drop across your expansion valve, and this is a nominal rating of the evaporator, well, you know, all the stuff that we put in, it spits out this valve. So this was the original valve that I was looking to order. Uh, when I did contact the manufacturer, they suggested going with the four, um, which was there uh, based on their calculations. So we decided just to put the four in there and uh, go with the manufacturer's selection criteria. If we had an, um, wanted to go in with the six, it would have been fine. Uh, not a not a big deal. Uh, let's see. What else can we talk about here? Oh, one other thing here. If you'll notice that if we go back in the uh, selection tool, you'll see. If we put in zero subcooling, you will get this message here, subcooling equals flash.